Theo, thanks for coming in this morning. Oh, it's my pleasure. And well, let's get right to it. Your book, Playing with Fire. Uh, up until the time of your writing of this book, you had been in great denial about mm -hmm. what had happened to you early in I your career. I don't think I was in denial. No, I, I, you were just I, quiet about I, it. I wasn't ready. Right, okay. You know, and uh, um, the book uh, was incredibly cathartic. You know, I I had a lot of resentment. I had a lot of anger. I had all, all those things still were a part of my life. And then I started writing the book, and they started to uh, dissipate and go away. And, uh, you know, when I finished the book, I was like, you know what, yeah, now, now I really know why I was put on the earth and the purpose for my life. And, and then when I started out on the book tour, you know, that one in six stat that, that first came to my head, I was like, I don't, I don't really know if I believe this or not. I went on my book tour, bang, Absolutely. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys, every book signing, me too. Me too, me too, me too. So that's when I, I really uh, felt, and, and you know, are you getting help? Is there anywhere you can go to get help? No, there's nowhere to go. So instead of talking about Graham James and all that stuff, let's start talking about uh, a quarter of, of Canada's population before the age of 18 have been sexually molested. So let's talk about, you know, funding programs that get people into the process of healing. You know, that, that victim, survivor, victor, advocate. Those are the four stages, I think. Say that, that again. Victim. victim, survivor, victor, advocate. You know, that's the four-step system that we need to put in place where people who, it takes a tremendous amount of courage. And what Todd did yesterday was, you know, was really unbelievable for him to show that much strength. This is Todd Holt, your cousin, yes. just so people yeah. don't, because there yeah. was a publication mm -hmm. ban on his name up until yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And in for, your family. Yeah, Theo. and for him to come forward yeah. shows just an incredible amount of courage. And, and uh, you know, we want to promote that. But it's only when you're ready, and it's right. only in your time, you know. And people always ask me that question, well, why did you get in business with him? Well, you know what? I was just surviving. I was just living day to day in my personal hell and and you know this guy kept pestering me and bothering me and and uh, and, and it's not easy and and when you have post traumatic you know stress disorder right. you know to go on top of all of that you know it's a very confusing time and period and, and take, you take you're taking us back to Graham James yeah. in that and in the book it's very candid if you have the opportunity to read playing with fire I highly recommend mm. uh, because you are so personal and so candid it's mm. it's it's earth-shattering to <laughs> read it I can only imagine what it was like to live it but the most important thing here is the understanding of of how your brain worked through that mm. time and how you felt well, helpless do you realize that when a child is abused that their brain actually shrinks and twists and so now uh, you know, you need to find the right uh, therapy program so that you can unwind all of that damage that has been done. And it takes a long, long period of time. So, you know, the more that we're around this, the more that we talk about it, the, you know, I, I had a, I had a, a great uh, sponsor when I first started in the program that always said to me, said, you know what, more will be revealed. And, and you know, it's always, it's always happening. And we're evolving around the subject. Mm -hmm. um, and learning every day. Yeah, learning every day. You know what, we're gonna take a quick break because I wanna continue this conversation with Theo Fleury here. Um, we've got another segment coming up. We're gonna take a quick break so we can let it breathe for a little bit and talk about what to do if this has happened to you or to someone in your family or someone in your circle. Where do you go, what do you do? How do you deal with some kind of trauma, whether it's sexual assault or inappropriate touching yeah, and, or and inappropriate attention of any kind. It's 716 on a Thursday morning, special time with Theo Fleury on Breakfast Television. Stay with us. It's really fun. Welcome back to City TV, Breakfast Television, 720 with Theo Fleury talking about not only the, the what's in the news, the Graham James uh, waiting until March 20th to find out if he has jail time. He's apologized. We've heard your victim's statement. 
it's heady times, no yeah. question. Um, and perhaps we'll talk to you again around March 20th yeah. to find out your thoughts on, on the amount of time he might or might not spend mm -hmm. in jail. But most importantly this morning, we want to talk about your focus and your goal moving forward when it comes to what you've learned from the trauma that you truly have mm -hmm. suffered. And, and trauma is the word. Right? Trauma is the key word to all this. You know, uh, we just saw a special that Michael Landsberg did about, you know, mental health and, you know, their stat is one in five. You know, ours is one in three and one in five or one in six. And, you know. It's one in three boys and one in five girls? No. What is it? One in three girls. One in three girls. One in five boys before the age of 18 have been sexually molested. And what's the percentage that it's a family and member? Then, and then 80 percent of those victims have been molested by family members. So, you, you know, you're really dealing with the stigma, you know, who wants to upset the family apple cart, right? right. You know. And Do you believe the child when the child steps forward? Absolutely. But we don't make up stories like that. No. We cannot possibly make up stories like that unless we physically go through them. So. Um, it uh, it is an interesting subject, and you uh, get out and talk to the people about it because we've talked about Sheldon Kennedy and and how he has really been an advocate for setting up. Yeah, programs. he's set up some amazing mm -hmm. programs. You know, respect in sport, and uh, you know he works very closely with the Red Cross, and and he's done amazing work. But you know, like I was telling you during the break, when I was out on my book tour, you know, I wasn't seeing young boys that were seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. The guys that were coming up to the table were 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. And, 80 years <clears> old. And I know what kind of destruction that they bring to that table and how much pain and how much hurt. You know, I've always said, give me as much physical pain as I can handle because I'll heal from that. But emotional pain, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy because it, it, it really takes a long time. Uh, and it's about getting really honest, which the book was, was. I was as honest and brutally honest as I possibly could be. And That's I think, playing with fire for those just joining us. Playing with fire by. And I and yeah. I think that, can the C Canadian people really connected with that honesty because, you know, for so long you you, you buried the secret, and and you get to a point where you go, maybe I won't ever have to deal with this again. But sure enough, you know, it always. You know, rears its ugly head, and and uh, and now people actually come to you and share their stories, perhaps for the very first time ever, telling anybody. Yeah, most most are first time reveals. That's and a lot of weight for you, isn't it? No, you know what? Uh, I honestly believe that God picked me, and that's that's the connection that I was missing mm -hmm. throughout my NHL career. Was I didn't have a spiritual connection to anything. You know, I was just kind of you know, out there reacting and living, you know, uh, angry and all that stuff. Interesting, though, that you were still a hero then, but what a different <laughs> hero you are yeah. today, right? Yeah, I like this, I like this uh, a lot better, and, and uh, you know, God picked me because he knew that I would be able to get through whatever, you know, he only gives us as much as, as we can handle, and, and, uh, and it's funny because the connection is I am an Aboriginal person, I'm a First Nations person, I'm Métis, and, you know, I've been to 30 uh, different uh, res uh, reservations in the last three or four years. And they have really given me my life back through their spiritual ceremonies, you know, sweat lodges, um, smudging, uh, powwows, sun dances, all that. And, uh, you know, it, it, it is, it's been an incredible uh, journey. You know, I was in Bella Coola. I spoke at a uh, sexual abuse conference in Bella Coola. And uh, I went on a hike with a, a young gentleman who was big on the, on the history of his, of his people. And we hiked up into the mountains and we walked beside this incredible stream where you could just reach in, taste the water. And uh, we got to this opening and there was a whole bunch of carvings of animals all over. And he started to explain what each carving meant. And there was one carving that really caught my attention, and it was a carving of a frog. And the frog, we're told, never looks back. Oh. Right? He always keeps moving forward, forward and ahead. He can look to the left, he can look to the right, but he never hops backwards. And so nine, fast forward nine months, I'm in Winnipeg at another conference, and there's a sweat lodge right on Main Street in Winnipeg, if you didn't know that, I called the know. Thunderbird House. And so we did a sweat the night before I was I went to speak, and so the, 
I spoke at the uh, at the conference and I told the story of the frog. And sure enough, I was done speaking. The, the spiritual leader who ran the sweat the night before grabbed the mic and said, you'll never guess what walked into the sweat lodge last night. God. He said a frog. I love that. And then there's oh. my frog. Look at that. There it is. You wear this very well, my friend. Well, thank I've you. I've known you for so long. Yes. And I've never seen you so at peace. Thank no, you for thank being you. with us this morning. Thanks for having me. Baron Flurry. 725 on a Thursday, just another Thursday on Breakfast <laughs> Television.